say it again, Palat, Pelagic, Pelagics, 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 <laughs> Poly, <laughs> Pelagos, <laughs> big fish with teeth that eat other fish. Can I say that one? <laughs> big fish with teeth that eat other fish. Uh, there is a lot of bait in the surf right now, a lot of uh, finger mullet running, and that is great bait. So we're going to switch up from when we were using shrimp, a lot of shrimp earlier, and catching mullet and going for pompano. And we're going to switch over and we're going to put some big hooks, some bigger hooks on, and we're going to use some of those live finger mullet and see if we can catch some of the pelagics. <laughs> Let's go fishing. All right, I talk a lot about targeting your species, and that's really what we're going to do here. We're going to change things up. We're right at that time of the year when things are changing over. So I'm getting rid of the one-out hook on the double drop rig, and I'm getting rid of the shrimp that would, we've been using to catch whiting and pompano. And I'm going with this rig here. It's a float rig. It's got a three-out hook. It's got a steel eater, and I put a little float in the middle. And I'm just going to use, to start with, some uh, frozen finger mullet. But I'm going to find out later that that might not be the best option, but it's what I had at the time. So I'm just using some frozen finger mullet. Um, like I said, this is a three-out hook, so it's a little bit bigger. And I'm putting it in the back here. And the idea is to target some bigger fish, some blue fish, some Spanish mackerel would be great. Um, and just the, the pelagics, if you will, the bigger fish that are coming in. Because what's happening is, in the surf now, is live finger mullet. There's some nice schools running down the beach and that's going to continue to increase as we go into the fall. So originally when I'm or earlier in the year when I'm fishing for pelagics I go out pretty deep. So you can see I'm casting out pretty deep right here. I'll turn around and show you the beach and you can see it's pretty far away. So I'm trying to get the the fish that are way kind of way out there but as the bait starts to run into the surf they're going to keep coming in closer and closer so I'm not going to need to do that. Now right here is a comic tail. You can see me and I'm struggling to get this fish in, obviously a quality fish. I had just started to move my sand spike when it hit. So I don't have the sand spike up so I can't put the rod in the sand spike, which you might think isn't a big deal, except for what I noticed was I'm getting a hit on the other rod. And in just a second, you're gonna see, I've had a couple of hits, watch that rod, look at it bend right there. So I'm kind of panicking at this point. I'm like, I know I have this big fish on here, but I also wanna get that other big fish. And I also have to know what type of fish it was. So I really wasn't as excited about what I'm dragging in right here as what might be on the other rod. So I finally got the sand spike in. I got the rod in the sand spike and I'm just going to drag this fish. I'm just panicking. I keep looking over at the other rod thinking, oh man, it's still there. It's still there. Let me get this fish onto the shore. And of course I knew what it was. It was a stingray, which I said I wasn't as excited about. But by the time I got it up there and I checked the other rod, <laughs> that fish was gone. So I never got that fish on the other line. Never will know what it was, but I have the stingray. Now there's been some questions I've been having about, is this a stingray? or is it a skate? And what I've learned by doing a little research on Google is that it is a stingray because it had a barb, hence the term, the term stingray, they can sting you, and skates don't. The rain kept coming down, so this is a terrible, terrible scene, but I did get another fish on the rod, and it is a bluefish, and not a bad-sized bluefish, so they were hitting the, the mullet at that point. You can see him here, very bad video, I apologize for that, but I wasn't going to keep that bluefish that day, because if I don't eat the bluefish that night, I don't keep it. So, anyway, the weather kind of cleared up, and my neighbor Dave was like, let's go out on the boat, and I'll show you how to troll for Spanish. So he got some of these Clark Spoon setups, um, and I've never done this before, so this is all new to me. And what came in the kit was, to start with, is a planer. Now this is a planer right here, and I was not even sure how to connect this to my line. The idea of the planer is, it gets connected to your main line, right here like this, and the planer goes through the water, and it holds down the Clark spoon, which is the lure, underneath the water. So it's not just skipping along the top. There are different size planters. This was a size one, but I think they come in one, two, three. And depending on the size, they go deeper in the, in the water. So that planer is connected to all this mono. And at the end of that is the Clark spoon. And in the front of that is this little swivel. And the swivel goes all the way around. So it spins all the way around. And that prevents the Clark spoon from just spinning in the water. It keeps it nice and straight. Because it's not a very heavy Clark spoon. So that'll be on the end. Very shiny. The fish sees it. Comes out and, and bites it. That's the whole idea right there. So we're going to go out in the boat. And we're going to try it. Now I also got this other one. Which came with a bird. 
And the same idea with the swivel that goes all the way around and just no weight. So this one does skip along the top with the Clark spoon. So I thought I would try, you know, I have two of the planers that go under the water and this one that floats along the top. I figured we could troll three. So Dave uh, offered to take us out on the boat and here's Captain Dave driving the boat and he put me in charge of <laughs> trolling for the, for the Spanish. So basically what I'm going to do is here's the one with the bird on it and the Clark spoon and I'm just going to dip it off the side kind of out to the side so it's away from the engine now we're moving we're moving at a pretty good speed i guess uh, between four and five knots because the spanish mackerel are pretty quick and i'm just going to let that line out and the idea is that i'm just going to let it do a whole bunch of line out and eventually just shut the bail and just put it in the rod holder and like i said we're going to move it we're about a, about a mile or so off of off of uh Oak Island there, uh, water depths between like 19 and let's say 25 feet, sort of in that range. We were kind of ch chugging along, trying to find the deeper water at some point. There's about 19 you can see on the, on the fish finder. And we went down into the Cape Fear and I finally did get one um, in the Cape Fear. So I, I started reeling it in and I'm like, okay, this is, this is kind of heavy. It's kind of pulling. It kind of has this different action. The planer makes the rod bend over. But what happens is when the planer gets to the top, you can't reel it in anymore. And then you have all this mono because the planer is going to hit the eye, right? So you have all this mono that you have to hand line in. I don't know if that's really fishing or not. <laughs> it doesn't seem like if I'm not reeling it in, I'm not catching the fish. But I was able to just hand line it in and pull up my catch, which I was fairly excited about. As you can see here, it was a conch shell or not in very good shape one. Or it might be a whelk. I'm not sure. It was in such bad shape. Who can tell what really it is? But the Clark's bone hit it, probably because we weren't in deep enough water and the planer was all the way down the bottom. So we trolled around a little bit more and I got another. There's the planer. And I'm going to hand, hand line this in as well. Um, and... and it's like, why is the fish even still on when you think about it? Like I'm playing around with this planer, but he was. So I kept pulling it in and I finally got it up and it turned out to be this guy right here, a little blue fish. So I know this concept works, <laughs> but you're just kind of driving around in a boat. And gas is kind of expensive. <laughs> I decided since we're in the Cape Fear anyway, let's stop and get some lunch. So we decided to go over to Bald Head Island and you can park in the marina. Now, it used to be like $20 to park for a couple of hours, but they changed it. And now it's like $2 a foot for your boat for all day. I didn't want to park all day. I just wanted to stop and have lunch. This old baldy right there, the uh, lighthouse on, um, on Bald Head Island. But anyway, back to the money. I had to pay $42 because I was in a 21-foot boat. $42. I don't think I'm going to be going here for lunch anymore. But we did end up going to Jules, Salty Grub, and Island Pub. And one of the reasons is because they would allow the dog. So here's Bailey. She's very excited about getting some lunch. So we uh, ended up going over and sitting. And the fun part is they do have this nice big deck. And you can sit and look over the marina. And you can watch your boat. <laughs> and you can also watch the other boats out there. So the view was really nice. Um, I don't know if it was worth the $42 I had to pay to park there. But anyway, uh, it was fun to sit and look over the marina. And so what am I going to get for lunch? Looking over the menu, and I'm like, hmm, there's a lot of good choices on here. But you know what caught my eye? Right over here, the grouper BLT. Huh, grouper BLT. That sounds pretty good. Let's get one of those. So they came over, brought our meals. A nice big portion, so fairly happy with that. Here comes mine right here, the grouper BLT. Take a look at this. That is a fish heart attack waiting to happen right there. That's a beautiful piece of sandwich. <laughs> and I was pretty happy. And the dog was like, I want mine too. Actually, we got the dog a hamburger. Uh, there it is right there. <laughs> so you can sit there. You go watch the uh, ferry come in. Those ferries leave some big wakes out in the Cape Fear. I will tell you that much. Anyway, ate lunch, decided I'm out in the Cape Fear. Let me take advantage of it. Do a little fishing out in the Cape Fear from the shore instead of the boat. And so I was casting out again. And we were using live... Um, mullet at this point we were catching and I got this poor man's tarpon otherwise called a ladyfish uh, not much good for eating fun to catch they jump like little tarpon um, and but they they're full of bones I guess and people say they make good bait but uh, I didn't need them so he was just going to go back and go swim around and let somebody else catch him after I caught him I did hook up to a nice big fish and this is it right here and I was pretty happy if you look at the reel I know it's hard to see I'm tightening the drag I'm trying to reel it in watch it he's running and running and running and running and I got a little moment where I could reel him in a little bit tighten up the drag again and he's running and running and running and running and I'm like wow this is a fun fish and then I was watching him jump out there I could see him jump so I had a pretty good idea what I had this was either going to be a blue fish or something very special so I was like I'm going to take my time let him run when he wants to run. Just if you got the drag set right, let him run. Let him wear himself out. Uh, I don't need him breaking my line. 
So again, he's running. Again, I'm tightening the drag. Again, I'm reeling him in. And I'm kind of walking him down the beach, as you can see. And I'm walking him down the beach. And I'm like, all right, I'm getting him pretty close to shore. And my son-in-law was there. So I said, do me a favor. Go out and just see if you can see about how far out. Like, where is he at? In, in the water. I just kind of wanted to know where he was at, like how close he was. Cause at this point I couldn't see him. So he ran out there and he was able to see it. So he was able to identify how big it was and exactly what it was. But he made a rookie mistake. Unfortunately, right here, you can see he grabbed the line. And when he grabbed the line, it popped. That fish wasn't able to run anymore. And I was like, what was it? And he was like, it was about yay big. It was right here. And it was a tarpon. And I'm like, oh man, that would have been my second tarpon I would have caught in the surf. Anyway, uh, I'd had a, lost a couple of fish that day, um, and one was on this steel leader rod, and he just broke the clasp right off, so I don't know what that was either, and I, I just happened to put this on because I had it, and I wanted to try it, but I was like, I got to get back to business. Let's make some serious rigs, so I got here a three-odd hook, the five-odd hook. I got some um, swivels, and of course, that American fishing wire I was just showing, and I'm like, I'm going to just put on some haywire twists. If you don't know how to do a haywire twist, look it up. There's plenty of videos out there to show you how to do it. I'm not great at it, but I get I get the job done, and um, I made a couple, and I, I did the five up, but I think the three up was, was better, and my cat really wanted to help. He's very helpful um, at making um, rigs, as you can tell here. He's, he's so much help. <laughs> Actually, he's like, get off the table, first of all. Second of all, stay away from the hooks. He was very curious. That does, kills cats. Curiosity. Waves have been strong this week. Been lots of wind, but so much bait out there, even with the waves. So I decided, let me take the cast net out. Stop playing with dead finger mullet, and let's get some live stuff. Like, the fish were kind of starting to snub their nose up at the dead stuff, because they're like, why do I want to eat dead finger mullet when I can get all this live stuff? So I got out there through the cast net. Pretty difficult to do in the heavy waves, but the, if you land on top of a school, you're just going to get some, because there's just so many when they're in a school. So I ended up getting them nice and big finger mullet. These guys are nice, much bigger than you're going to get out. If you've seen previous, previous videos when I was out in like Davis Canal trying to get some, they were a lot smaller. These are nice and big and chunky. And getting them in the bucket's always a trip because they just jump out as soon as they get in there. So you gotta like, oh, he's gotta pick them up, put them back in the bucket, and keep the top on. So here's my three out hook. I stick them in the tail. Um, I find that you can stick them through the head. A lot of people do. And I think they live longer if you do that. But um, I find that the fish come up and grab grab the bait from the back. So sometimes I'll reel it in and just have the head on. So I like to stick them in the tail. Look what happened. The eye of my re my rod. Um, broke it rusted off so I put a zip tie on and it held and I was like all right I'll get through this day I did take it over to Dutchman's Creek and for like five bucks they fixed it now I went down there and I was fishing with uh, Desired Fishing if you haven't checked out he's got a video a YouTube channel too so I'm going to put a link to it above and he was catching fish too pelagics just like me and he caught this guy right here baby shark do 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 uh, you know he asked like what kind of shark is it and I just call him dogfish so maybe this could be the skate stingray controversy all over again but I just call them dogfish they don't get much bigger than this 12 inch guy right here right but maybe they could be baby sand sharks I don't really know so if you know leave a comment below let's get to the bottom of that um, so he's got his video going he's, he's getting all psyched up and we're gonna do this for two days um, in this rough surf and then the second day he was out there he had the same luck that I had <laughs> unfortunately I got one video of it and it's short but he was out there fishing and he got a hit on this rod and watch this rod bend Man, that was some big fish he had on that rod. That thing's bending, and then just as soon as it hit, it was gone. I'm going to show you this in slow motion because I feel your pain, bro. I have lost some fish this week, too, and I know exactly what it feels like to have that rod bend over just like that, and you're, like, thinking, I'm concentrating, I'm letting him run, I'm letting him run, I'm doing everything right, and then, bam, snap, it comes back, and you just feel that. <laughs> it's just that moment of... Ah, uh, defeat. <laughs> like I said, I feel that pain. I lost a couple of fish this week too. But you know what? He was doing everything right. And it's just, just the nature of the game. Sometimes you get them, sometimes you don't, especially with big fish. But we looked at it and look, the fish broke the wire. This fish broke the wire. <laughs> you see that fish? He broke that piano wire. <laughs> it's like a scene from Jaws. But he didn't know what to do. I didn't know what to do. You know, you just go back to, to fishing. And the next day I went back to fishing. It was Saturday and I, I took the, the group out from the rec center out fishing because we do the fishing school there. And this guy got his pelagic right here. Nice little bonnet head. 
uh, caught on some mullet, just like we've been fishing all week. Um, you can catch these things on crabs, real easy. Um, this one just happened to take the bonnet, and I just got the pliers out because I'm like, eh, got some teeth there. <laughs> um, but we let him go back into the ocean. You can eat these things. Um, they're not bad, but this one was a little small. So we're just going to release him, photo op, and then back into the water. So I decided to return to the basics that I started with, which was the float rig. I got the American Fishing Wire, the Haywire Twist, a nice float here I got that I allowed to rock back and forth instead of being tied down like the uh, original rig earlier in the video, and a three-out hook at the end, which I put some live finger mullet on and cast it out not too far, and it wasn't too long before I had a hit on it. And um, I started reeling it in and thinking, this is a nice fish. And when I got it up on the surf, it was. It was a Spanish mackerel. And I didn't even need to troll on a boat. Caught him right in the surf. It was about 19, 20 inch Spanish mackerel. Pretty happy with that. I was not even prepared for this. I didn't even have a cooler. Luckily, in the class were some math teachers from West. And I think they were impressed with me because during the class, I said some math stuff like percentage and um, diameter meter and geometry and calculus. And so they were like, that's cool. He knows his math stuff. Even though I'm a lowly art teacher, it was cool. So she was like, come on, I got some ice. You can put it in my cooler. And I was very thankful for that because I'm going to take him home and I'm going to blacken him for dinner and it's going to be pretty good. So there are a lot of pelagics out there in the surf. Look, there's the fish. It fits right in his mouth. That's what he's biting on. Uh, and get out there and let's catch something. Let's go.